Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. I'm glad to have you guys here on this Monday, April 24th, 2023. Thank you for tuning in. You see what's behind my head? This is M2 Money Supply. Oh, let me see. We can uh, take a look. Yeah, see, it's swooping up right there. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's going up now. I told you guys for a long time. That we were in this area right here where it was descending down, 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 down. Uh, all the way through uh, 2015, 16, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. It really took a big dip down, you know. And it continued to swoop along sideways in a very down low position all the way through 2021 and early 2022. And now it's swoop, it's starting to swoop up. What the heck's going on? We got the money supply uh, is starting to move. That's what's happening. Money is starting to move. But at the same time, I mean, this is a dichotomy. It shouldn't be something that shouldn't be. If we take a look at the M2 money supply, the money supply is actually starting to drop and drop rather quickly. Going back to 20, it actually started in July of 2022, and we see it's accelerating and picking up pace. The money supply is dropping off. What's, what the heck's going on? You guys want to know what's going on? The banks are not lending. This is the biggest money creation tool in this enormous worldwide global money Ponzi scheme. They have to constantly keep new, new money coming in. If you ever study a Ponzi scheme, you notice that new fresh money has to keep coming in on the front side. Otherwise, a Ponzi scheme breaks to pieces. And because the banks are out there right now, I mean, there's a crisis going on right now. They are stuck in a lot of new home construction right now is not being financed. They can't finance it. The banks are not lending out. They've stopped, all but stopped. And this is a very recent thing. This is not something new. This is not something old. This is something new. Money is being drained. It's all come from them raising interest rates so fast. That's what's happened. And, you know, I mean, this is setting up for a crisis. Not right this yet. But it's setting up for a crisis because the money pool that keeps this entire Ponzi, global Ponzi scheme in, a, uh, in the hyper bubbles that we're in, which is called the everything bubble. It's this liquidity constantly being injected in that keeps all this running and keeps it oiled. So it's exactly, this situation is exactly like a person who's letting their car oil get lower and lower and they're not putting new oil in and their car's leaking a little bit of oil. You know, and it's getting lower and lower on the dipstick. This is exactly the same situation. You guys out there, you've all had that happen. And maybe, maybe uh, some really nice lady, maybe she's a little bit older, she buys a car and she just doesn't know. Maybe about checking the oil and stuff and she doesn't ever, ever, ever checks it and gets lower and lower on the dipstick. And then what happens is all of a sudden the oil light comes on. And that's where we're going with this. You have to keep this system oiled with liquidity. And right now it's draining out. Now she could still be running her car, driving down the road, and not notice that there's a problem until the red light comes on. Well, that's where we're at right now with this situation. The liquidity is being drained out of the system. See the money supply dropping right now. This is the oil draining out of the engine, but we're still running. Everything's still running. But you know that it's not going to stop. It's going to keep draining. Look behind my head. See it going down? It's going to keep going until there's not enough oil to run this engine. And what generally happens? I mean, anything could happen. When you run an engine low on oil and the red engine light comes on, I mean, the engine just could freeze right up. Because this is a very serious situation for a car engine, not to run out of oil. And that what we're looking at is it's a very situation, the same situation as in the economy. It's a very serious situation for the economy to run out of liquidity. Because that's what it runs on. What do we got here? It says, and this is the reason why the M2 
even though the M2 money supply is dropping, on the other side of this coin, we see that the, uh, <clears throat> let's take a look at it again. Which one was this? This was the M2 money supply, a velocity of money. This one, this this is what we want to take a look at again, even though this is swooping up. Why is this swooping up? If the money supply is shrinking, people should be spending less and the velocity should be slowing down. Why is the velocity going up so fast? The reason why this velocity is going up so fast is, is because they're de-dollarizing at the same time. So we got two things happening at once, guys, and this is creating a dichotomy. The first thing that's happening is dollars are starting to come home to roost from the global system. They're done with the dollar. They're letting the world know we're done with this stuff. We're done with the control. They're saying we're we don't we've tired we're tired of the control that's extended to us from the dollar being the world reserve currency. They're extending this control to the nations and they're saying, okay, you can't play in our system. Because you did whatever. You can't now you can't play in our system. This is control. They're tired of that control. They want to be out from underneath it, the eastern countries. And so they're de dollarizing it at a faster pace, and this is causing the velocity of money to go up. At the same time, we've got the money supply shrinking down. So this is our dichotomy. Uh, let's get in there and take a look at something here. Uh, this, this is the article. It's defund the glo they call them global police. You know who's the global police? <laughs> Who are they talking about there? De-dollarization is happening at a stunning pace because the world is tired of being policed by one country, and they're tired of that dollar being used as a weapon, and they're they're, they're forming alliances. And this is the shock everybody should have on their face. See that shock on, on, on the dollar bills? That should be the shock. That's what's going to happen to your dollar. And so that's why we got the velocity going up. But at the same time, they're draining the liquidity out. So we're heading sort of some sort of weird. This is a very weird crisis that's coming very, very soon. Where on one end of the system, there's not enough money to run the system. And on the other end of the system, we're seeing inflation and we're seeing a speeding up of the velocity of money. So it's trying to hyperinflate. On this side over here, it's trying to hyperinflate. And on this side over here, it's trying to crash into a mark to market where people aren't going to have liquidity to maintain their businesses and stuff. And they're going to have to, of course, liquidate at mark to market. So mark to market over here deflating and over here we got it hyperinflating at the same time which is going to win what do you guys think well for a very short period and I've, this is why I've been forecasting this for years I call it the deflationary spike event this deflation is going to have for a very short period of time more power than the inflation it's going to cause a crash of some sort some sort or another but they're not going to let that go. They're not going to say, okay, we're going to let this too big to fail. It might be a too big to fail bank. They're going to say, hey, we can't let that fail. Then when they come in and they do their action, then uh, then the winner in all of this is going to be the hyperinflationary side. And that's what's coming. Now, China right now, <coughs> take a look at this. Chinese ambassador, he's made waves Big, a big wave he's made uh, it says the Chinese ambassador suggests that ex-Soviet states aren't real countries. So ex-Soviet states, let's see, who would that be? I think uh, maybe, uh, well, when the former Soviet Union was in all of Eastern Europe, they occupied all these countries like Romania, uh, Poland, they occupied all of these countries, these states over there. And so is he actually saying that those states are not real countries? Is that what he's saying? Countries like, uh, uh, let me see, he lists some of them here. Uh, questioning, he says he's questioning the sovereignty of former Soviet republics. 
Uh, where did I see it here? Uh, European countries demanding answers. Uh, Baltic countries like Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia. Uh, they're summoning their, their the Chinese ambassadors for an explanation of what he meant by all of this. Uh, statements of denunciation are expected from other European officials as well. Uh, they don't want to be told that they're not a real country. You get a country like, uh, say, uh, Latvia or Estonia, they don't want somebody coming in and saying, hey, you're not even a real country. <laughs> they, they, can, they are countries. But they're going to demand an explanation from the Chinese ambassador. So this is creating a little bit of a... But you know what it tells me? I'm sitting back here looking at this and I'm saying to myself, China is being awfully strong here, or showing strong positions, and these strong positions are what you see a country show, but when they're when they're muscling up and they're beating on the war drum. Look at their big muscles while they're beating on the war drum. That's what all this is about. You know? When a country sits there and they're beating on the war drum and they're saying to themselves, hey, you know, I'm going to war anyway. I don't care if I make buddies or not because I'm going to be trying to push through whatever they're going to do. Like, and maybe they got Taiwan in their, in their sights right now. And maybe they're preparing for an enormous war, maybe. I'm just saying, you know. But uh, they start countries when they're preparing for something like that they, they're beating on the war drum they they get big strong muscles boom 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 <laughs> and they're flex they flex their military they flex their might you know or, uh, every country does this when they're getting ready and you know it, it's it's anyway the world has been seeing a bit of this especially in countries like North Korea They've been firing off these uh, missiles, you know, and uh, beating loudly on the war drum, you know. It reminds me of the period uh, in history just before Pearl Harbor. That's kind of like the little period we're in right here. Moving on. Uh, silver price today is shooting up right now at 2516. Gold. Gold is shooting up at two dollars and sixty cents to nineteen eighty six. Now cryptos today, cryptos. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of this really. Whether it's the uh, kind of coming to the close of a bull market rally. I mean a bear market rally. Sure, sorry, I didn't mean a bull market rally. I mean a bear market rally. Are we coming to the kind of the close of a bear market rally? Or are we nearing the beginning of a bull market with cryptos? But today we're looking at a Bitcoin price of 27,353 and Ethereum's at 1849. So it has been treading water a little bit the last few days. Dow Jones Industrial Average is up nine points at 33,818. And uh, what we're looking at is crude oil at 78.68. It's up 81 cents on the day. The bonds and rates today, we're looking at falling yields. The U.S. 10 years at 3.51, and the U.S. 30 years at 3.72, and it's fell 5.3 basis points. Now, here's the thing, guys. We see these falling yields. People are still buying into U.S. Treasury bonds, even though the United States. Treasury bond is like buying bonds in a corporation that's over $200 trillion in debt, counting their unfunded liabilities. Things like Medicare, social, social, social programs, and things like that. Their unfunded liabilities, when you count all that in, they're well in excess of $200 trillion in debt. So it's a very, very, it's a company. If you're looking at a company, it's extremely deep in debt. Uh, just picture a company that has the right, somehow or another, has the right to counterfeit money. But they can legally counterfeit money. Okay? And picture that corporation is, is, is over $200 trillion in debt, and it's the biggest corporation on earth. But they are so deep 
in the red that they'll never be able to get out and they're issuing bonds and you're planning on buying those bonds from this corp defunct corporation but there's a caveat that they are the only corporation in the world that's allowed to counterfeit money and so they can pay you in counterfeited money and they're never going to be have they're never going to ever run out of that money because they can just make as much as they want it's it's not really counterfeiting but it's like they're counterfeiting money and the fact that they don't have to ask anybody they can just push a few buttons on the computer and they can create another trillion anytime they want so they're going to pay you but at the same time they're a bankrupt corporation so these defunct things that they're going to pay you in don't have any real value to them at all because the corporation is bankrupt. And people are still buying in because they know they're going to get paid. And they know they're going to make a little bit of, of, uh, of interest. So they're buying in because there's no place else to go right now much. Except for gold and silver, and you know how investors are about gold and silver because it's something you have to take allocation. So, so they're sitting there and they're saying, "Where do we go? What? Well, we, well, we go in, we go into money market. We go into treasury. Are we going to go into T bills? Where are we going to go?" And the guy says, "Well, let's go into gold." He says, "Yeah, but uh, I got to invest here a hundred million dollars and." Uh, you know about gold uh, what are we gonna buy GLD we can't buy the real thing take possession of a hundred million dollars of gold what do we do with it this is what it's like for these rich people and stuff the real big money now I know you guys you're able to easily go out and buy a little bit of gold because you're buying like maybe an ounce now, there's no problem taking possession of that but now think if you had to have a hundred million dollars worth where are you going to put that golden dump truck full of gold? A uh, hundred million dollars worth of gold. Where are you going to put it? It's going to weigh a lot. Tons. And people are going to be interested in stealing it. You got to take out. And either that, it's either that or you're going to buy the GLD. And people are wanting to get out of those positions because there's no underlying uh, real gold behind it. It's it's just paper. So this is a, represents a little bit of a problem for investors. The problem that gold exists in the real world. But for the small investor, that's a plus. A big plus, the fact that it exists in the real world. But for the big investor, it's a negative. So they just go out and buy a treasure because it's easy. Buy, buy, some, buy some of this gook. Because they know they're going to get paid on this stuff. They know it's not going to default. I mean, okay, I've heard Janet yelling out there right now and they're talking about the debt ceiling come and do and everything and it's going to, going to default or whatever. We could default, blah, blah, blah. But they never do. They're going to pay. This is why we're going to have hyperinflation. is is because it's just like a default. What's happening right now with the system evaporating the liquidity and something's going to break, a big bank or something. Could be BlackRock. Or another big one, outfit, but they won't let them go down. Could be, could be, uh, what do you call it over there, uh, Deutsche Bank, but they won't let them go down. When they get in trouble, that's when all of this game ends and it switches in the opposite direction because they won't let them go down, the big ones, because of what it would do, and so they're going to keep pumping the money in, and this is just a game, a waiting game now. To show that that's what they're going to do. Because it hasn't been shown 100% yet to investors out there that this is what they're going to do. Uh, the idea is still out there. Oh, they might let a big, they might let it all go down into a huge depression. We better hang on to our dollars. Because it might all descend into an 80% down on the stock market and everything else. And people will be buying real estate up for pennies on the dollar and everything will be there for corporations and everything you'll be able to buy everything at pennies on the dollar that's a pipe dream because they're not going to let that happen I already know they're not going to let that happen they're not going to let everything everything descend into into deflate but they have to be forced 
they're going to let it deflate right now as long as everything's running along with a reasonable amount of security in the system. Like everything isn't crashing quite yet. They're going to let it go. It's going to be after everything crashes that they're going to come out and say, hey, you know what? We got to get the printer going again. It's just going to keep, they're going to keep doing this. This is what they've done, and this is what they'll keep doing, and it's shown that this is what they'll do, because remember back in this SD, SVB crisis, uh, the Silicon Valley Bank crisis, do you remember how quick they reacted, how quick they went in closed door meetings, and how quick they had a response, and how quick they opened up the floodgates of money, uh, the overnight window at the banks, so that they could restore liquidity to the banking system? They can do all this stuff overnight. And then you're back in gear again. And it's just like nothing happened. But it's a hit on the dollar. And they're going to continue in this direction. This is the direction they're moving in. They're going to continue in this direction. So taking a look at the dollar index today at 101.45. This is why the dollar right now isn't up around 120. is because of all this stuff going on with the BRICS nations pulling away and with them being forced in the end to relent and start the printers up again. And the smart people out there know that. They know that it's going to go into inflation. It's just you got your people out there who think that they're not going to do that. They can't. They say, oh, they can't. They'd have to print $20 trillion. They can't do that. They can't possibly do that because they'll have to let this fail in the end. Won't they? I mean, they just can't keep printing endless amounts of money. They're going to have to at some point let the debt expunge from the system, right? No, they don't have to. It's going to be proven. They've already told you they got an endless printer. And they will use it when the crunch comes. But only when the crunch comes. Right now, we're not having the crunch. But the crunch is coming. They've created the situation here where we're going to have the crunch. Something's going to break big. Could be Deutsche Bank. Could be BlackRock. It could be some big, big, big's going to break. But much bigger than Silicon Valley Bank because the liquidity is draining out right now. I can't tell you exactly what it is. It's going to break, but it's going to be really big. And then when they're going to have to come in and restore that, and then this game's going to be over, and we're going to be into the infl massive inflation coming. Just around the corner. Just got to wait until something big breaks. Thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. Thank you, my patrons out there. Got a patron show coming pretty soon. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next show, and have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.